Hey, this is the fourth part of my anti-movie movie theory series on Jordan Peele's Us. In this video, we'll get to explore a few more of the symbols and scenes in this movie and how they all support the theory that I presented in part one. Check that out if you haven't yet. Oh, and also, please, do click subscribe down here. So let's get into it. Let's take a sec to think back. You know, the movie's starting off in an amusement park when no one's particularly amused, the parents are bickering, and despite the adults' attempt to maintain a facade of fun, we get the sense that young Adelaide is picking up on all these vibes. As she wanders off in this scene, we see her father playing whack-a-mole, which is really the analogy for the story. It's, a, it's about the suppression of what is actually underneath, beating something back down. Later on in the movie, we get the counterpart to that scene as being uh, the father underneath punching the wall, if you ever catch that. So what does that mean when you hit the wall, right? It's like you actually realize you, you're coming up against something that you feel you can't get past. That's hitting the wall. Exactly what his factual self would be experiencing. That's freaking masterful, bro. This same scene also introduces us to the theme in the movie of alcohol and the use of alcohol. Uh, we see at the beginning that the father is drinking a bit too much. We can all kind of tell, oh, well, he looks like he just maybe had a few too many beers, which certainly plays a part in why she's able to wander off the way she does. But when we actually get to the bottom world and we see his behavior, his reality, in a sense, was something much worse than what the popular narrative is around drinking and our reasons for drinking from the movements of his tether underground. My assumption is that the father is drinking in order to suppress his rebellious, hard to control tether. A metaphor for someone having difficulty with maintaining their fictional narrative. His true self crying for help. We see moments of his tether scratching and resisting, even pouring out his drink strange although brief moments of self-awareness not shown by other zombie-like tethers. Alcohol gives him the resolve he needs to smile while suffering through his popular narrative at the same time that it emboldens his tethered's tendency to resist. A paradox which probably causes the implied breakdown within Adelaide's family structure and is also suggested to be at play in the marriage of Kitty and Josh. And her knowing these things about the world that she's in is precisely the reason she does not drink when it's offered to her. Most likely out of fear of losing herself and by extension, her children. The ambulance toy that the boy plays with is also paralleled by this ambulance that the family is riding off in at the end. The ambulance represents some aspect of holding on to this false narrative or protecting it. Earlier in the film, when Jason goes into the closet, we see that it is what he uses as the doorstop. Jason has a fear of the door shutting entirely on him while he's in the closet. And the ambulance protects him from this. The ambulance represents safety from the threat the tethered's world poses to their world. Symbolically, it leaves the door open for the narrative to stay where it is. The innate fear that he has of being locked in the closet. What's all that about? One who is trapped in certain spaces may actually become clearer about what they are and what they are not. In other words, that solitude that the boy would experience once the door shuts would cut him off from the fictional world he knows and reveal to him who he really is once there's the opportunity for his other self to come in there. Which is why this ambulance is their mode of transportation of getting away. Once they are victorious in preserving their narrative or the illusion of who they are, why they look the way they look. I have a theory on that, but let me warn you. It's kind of a combination of two things. Well, actually three things, but I'll start with the easiest first. The idea of it just being a jumper in itself represents the awareness of being 
in prison or a prisoner. And what Red did in effect was organize a prison rebellion against the people on the top. But first she had to convince the people on the bottom that they were prisoners. And now they're owning it. Here's my second theory. It's a little bit more out there. So check this out. If you've ever seen the documentary Wild Wild Country and you think about the color scheme of the group of people that were called the Rajneeshi people that formed a, a society separate from America. In some ways, they, they follow some of that color scheme, but also the tethers, much like the Rajneeshi's commune, could be identified as a cult complete with its own leader, sets of values, and sandals. Now, here's the third part of my theory, and I'll acknowledge that this is only right if everything else that I've said up to this point is completely accurate. They look the way that we look. We meaning us. Us meaning the audience from the perspective of the movie. Don't understand what I mean? Check it out. Monochromatic, shrouded mostly in burgundy red, exactly the traditional color of most cinemas and their seating. The tethers are the audience rebelling against the popular narrative, the movie itself. Is the tether, they're part of a world where they don't use their own voices. They allow the story to speak for them. Hence the grunting and all that weird stuff. When you think about somebody who may go through a certain trauma of their understanding of themselves, like Adelaide was, uh, the Adelaide replacement was Adelaide that person would have a hard time talking it's not only because she didn't use her voice it's because there's there's an issue with being able to express yourself um, after those moments in a way that you feel could be maybe understood by the people who are around you and and when you know it's kind of brushed off by Kitty by you know I get that totally we we we're clearly seeing that this is one of these moments where somebody is just not understanding Adelaide, only further justifying why she doesn't speak. Thanks for watching, and please click subscribe for more videos on this and other topics in the near future. This is Uncle Baye, and this is Right on Time. Right, right on time.